Hi, I'm Martin from RS Components. So DesignSpark PCB is used for two functions essentially. One is schematic capture, the other PCB layout. So let's start with the schematic capture part of DesignSpark PCB. I've just opened an example schematic that I've created earlier and I'm going to show you some of the user interface features here. So on the right hand side of my screen I've got the component bin. The component bin we use to temporarily store components that will be used on my schematic design. So in this case I've moved a voltage regulator off my design into the component bin ready for use later. So my component is added by simply dragging and dropping. Making connections is very easy on your schematic. Um, again, it's a simple double click or a drag and drop. In this case, let's double click on this terminal. So now I've started um, a wiring connection and you can see that that has now been added to this uh, existing connection. So I'm gonna complete that for these three um, unconnected pins. Once I've finished adding the connections to this component, now you can see all of those crosses that were marking my unconnected pins have disappeared. This component has now been successfully connected to all of the nets on the design. Pressing A will get me back to a full screen view of my design. Once you're finished with your schematic, you then want to translate to a PCB design. So let's show the steps involved with that. So firstly, I will go to Tools, Translate to PCB. This opens up the new PCB design wizard. So let's take a look and see what options I've got. The first thing I need to specify is a design technology file. Now every schematic, every PCB has an associated design technology file. These files are also called template files and they contain lots of information that's universal to that design. So for example, styles in terms of track styles, net styles, pad styles, any colors that you specify, and also what grids you would like to work on. I specify what units I want to work in and also the precision of those. So in this case, let's use mill, the next option we will have is to specify the number of layers that we want to use on this design. DesignSpark PCB supports an unlimited number of electrical layers. So by default, we can already set up 14 electrical layers, um, but let's go for two in this case. The next step we have to take is to define our board size. Again, like everything, this can be changed after you've exited the wizard and begun your PCB design, but this is a good place to start. So once we've got a board size, let's take a look at our next options. So placing and routing components uh, can be done by the program or manually, or a combination of both, which is more common. Um, initially, I will ask the program to place these components outside of the board, um, but this could equally be done inside of the board with some options to allow component side swapping, rotation, and so on. And also, of course, to specify what grid these components are going to be placed upon. Okay, so arrange outside the board is the option that I'm gonna take here, and on to next, where I'll be prompted to save my PCB design. And I will save it to this folder, finish, now, once the wizard is completed, I've now got my PCB layout. The first thing I'm going to do is drag some of these components into place, then do some routing. So, let's take a look at that. Placing components manually is a very easy task. You simply drag and drop, so that's a left click of the mouse, and drop your component into place where you want it on the board. Um, this green line indicates my board outline, as you can see in a similar Windows fashion, dragging and dropping will move your board outline until you're happy with it. Um, so we've just made ourselves a bigger board here, which we can reduce the size of once we're finished routing. 
Now I'm going to drag these components into probably illogical positions, but just to show how the component placement and routing works, um, let's put these components here, make a smaller board, and then work on some routing. So you'll notice these air wires which are present where nets are incomplete. So this is the program telling me I need to add some connections here. Let's start by using the auto router. This is found in tools, auto route nets, and then we can either route nets all in one, we can browse for each individual net, or we can define net classes. So for example, all of our power nets um, could be routed in one go from here. Um, I'm going to use all nets and keep the default options on here. So let's take a closer look at some of this routing. The first thing to note is that none of these tracks have been mitered. Um, this is something I could have done quite easily by selecting the option from within the auto router. But um, let's take a look how easy it is to mitre corners. With a double click on this corner and simply dragging to where I want the corner to go, um, you can see I've now mitered these corners. This is a very quick process to just tidy up your PCB design as you wish. Okay, so after I've mitered these couple of tracks, I also want to show you how the program handles switching between layers. So if I left click on this little segment here, um, I'm going to switch this from the layer it's on, which is top copper, and I'm going to put this track segment on the bottom layer. I do this by pressing L, keyboard shortcut, or right clicking, and specifying which layer I want this track to go on. Again, shortcut L. Let's click OK. We have the option to put it on the bottom layer. And now you see that segment of track has changed color to reflect it's now on the bottom copper layer. And two vias have been inserted to make those connections. This version of DesignSpark PCB I'm showing you is DesignSpark PCB version two. So, while my next step will be to generate some manufacturing files, before we do that, let me point out one of the coolest features we've added to version two of DesignSpark PCB. In DesignSpark PCB, we have a 3D viewer, which gives you a stunning real-time visual representation of how your board will look once it's been manufactured. So I'm gonna show you an example file that comes with the program, and let's view this in the 3D. As soon as the program has generated my 3D view of this circuit board, here it is. I can now zoom in, zoom out and rotate and really take a look at how exactly my board will look if it was manufactured based on that PCB layout. Um, this is excellent for seeing where you may have some clearance issues and some space tolerances that you can identify early before you've manufactured your PCB. And this 3D image can also be captured, exported to a bitmap, and so on, so that you can use this for documentation. Next up, let's generate some manufacturing files. The output manufacturing files option is found from the menu bar, output, manufacturing plots. This is where we create um, both documentation plots, such as PDF, but also here is where we could create Gerber and Exelon files. These are industry standard manufacturing files that you need to send to your PCB manufacturer so that they can build the PCB design that you've just done with DesignSpark PCB. In this case, I'm going to use the autogen plots function of DesignSpark PCB. Um, this gives a very simple way of generating, quickly generating Gerber files for your design. So let's start with clicking on this dialog box, Autogen Plots, and select Gerber. This gives me the option of what layers I want to include on the plot. Um, we're going to plot every layer, and we're not going to use any mirroring. And we will include the NC drill plots. 
Um, these are obviously important for any drill holes that need to be made on your design. When we've clicked OK, the Gerber setup is now complete. We're ready to generate Gerber files. All I need to do is click Run. I've already set these plots up. And the program generates a set of Gerber plots for this design. You now have enough information to get your PCB manufactured. Simply choose a PCB board supplier, send them your Gerber files, your drill files and your settings files and they have enough information to quote and build your PCB for you. Thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed this very, very brief walkthrough. DesignSpark PCB version 2, of course, is free of charge and available to anybody who's got an internet connection. So log on to designspark.com and download version 2 of DesignSpark PCB today. Thank you very much.